little background on my experience in this position. I have coached in many games where the talent distribution was not even, and I've been on both sides of the aisle, having the superior talent and also having to play against the superior talent. I draw on experiences from both situations. I draw experiences from being the more talented team and the opponent trying to use these tactics to keep themselves in the game. And I also have experiences from being the underdog in the things we tried to do to pull the upset. The clips in this video are actual game films from the games I've coached where my team was the underdog. My first head coaching job was at a smaller Catholic school. Catholic schools can sometimes get a bad rap in, o in Ohio uh, with high school athletics, but I can assure you we were not some recruiting juggernaut annihilating public schools with superior hand-picked athletes. We were largely a community school that had high standards for entrance and was comprised mostly of parochial school kids that had been in the Catholic school system since they were in elementary school. In this position, we had a hard time scheduling and usually had to have very challenging regular season schedules. Few of the smaller public schools wanted to play us due to the stigma attached to Catholic schools. However, since we had smaller enrollment, we were placed in the smaller school divisions for the state tournament, fluctuating between Division Three and Division Four the smallest two divisions in the state of Ohio. Particularly when we were placed in Division 4 for the state tournament with one of the higher enrollment numbers in Division 4, we would play teams that had no business being on the court with us. We were the favorites in the first few rounds of the tournament for sure, and teams tried to use any means necessary to keep their seasons alive and move past us in the tournament bracket. In those situations, we used the opposite tactics of this video to not let that happen. This was some good experience not allowing teams to upset us. In my second year coaching at the small Catholic school back in 2014, we joined a Catholic school conference that included several boys basketball powerhouse teams. None of us had a very easy time scheduling, all being Catholic schools, so it made sense to get guaranteed games on our schedules in all sports by joining the conference. To say we were in over our heads from a talent and athleticism standpoint would be an understatement. We had to figure out ways to give our team the best chance to win despite being at a disadvantage in key areas of the game. In my four years at the Catholic school, we had nice players, but our best athlete, athletes in that four-year span were a guard that went on to play NAI college basketball, a guard that went on to play D3 basketball, and a guard that went on to play D3 college football. Not too shabby for a four-year span at a smaller school, but in comparison's sake, we were competing against teams that had players committed to Division I schools such as Kansas, Ohio State, Northwestern, UNLV, Bowling Green, Marist, and the Citadel. The best team we would try these strategies against started a lineup featuring three Division I basketball commits, including a kid committed to Kansas, as well as two Division III basketball commits to round out the starting lineup. If that wasn't enough, they had a young player coming off the bench that would also go Division One for basketball. We had two players that could dunk a basketball come through our program over my four years, and these teams we were competing against would have five or six guys dunking per team, no problem. We had players that had ability, worked hard, and listened well, but our guys aren't the guys college coach salivating over, but we still found ways to compete in most of these games and even win a few. So here are the strategies we 